Hey everybody, so I want to do um, five step factoring with you um, that is for trinomials where the coefficient in the first term is larger um, than one. So like the ax squared plus bx plus c versus just x squared plus bx versus c. All right, so I want to do the four examples with you. So for the first one, you have here 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. All right, so in the five step, the first step is going to be multiply the coefficient of the first term and the last term. Okay, so you're multiplying A times C together. So in this case here, uh, we're taking 2 times 3, and that's going to create a new product, which is 6. So step number two is we're going to list the factors of the new product. All right, so listen the factors of six, making a smaller and a large factor com. So my smallest and large factor com um, factors are two and six, and then I've got two and three. Notice my product is positive. So it is positive. That's either going to be two positives or two negatives. So look to the middle term. And in this case here, my middle term is positive 5x, which means everybody's going to be positive. All right, so those factors um, that now give me 5 are going to be 2 and 3. So now step number 3 is we're going to rewrite the trinomial replacing the middle term replacing the middle term with the two new factors okay so what I'm doing is I'm going to take out this um, my middle term here the 5x here and replace it with my two new factors. So when I plug in my two new factors, unlike the Tron error, with Tron error, I could just plug in like the x plus two times the x plus three. But the problem is that front term coefficient complicates things. And remember, we changed the product. So you can't just plug in two and three, you're not gonna get the same thing. So here, replacing the middle term with your two new factors, you're gonna have two x plus. So instead of the five x, now you're gonna write your two new factors plus 2x plus 3x. So I'm replacing that with the two new factors plus the original notice. It's not 6, but the original um, product. So this 2x squared plus 5x plus 3x, sorry, plus 2x plus 3x plus 3 is the same thing as the trinomial. We're just breaking it apart. Now what we have, notice here, is four terms. So now step four and really step five can kind of go together, but now you're gonna factor by grouping, okay? Because I've created four terms for us. So now we're gonna factor by grouping. Um, I ran out of room, so let me just, let's do it in blue, I'll do it up here, okay? All right, so I'm gonna factor these two factors together, then these two factors. So for my first two factors, I'm gonna pull out a two X as my GCF, that leaves you with x plus 1. From your second two factors, 3x plus 3, pull out a 3. That leaves you with x plus 1. And then step number 5 is just to finish that grouping. Okay, So now pull out that x plus 1. And then you're left over with 2x plus 3. And that completes your answer. And you can check that um, by multiplying out, you know, using FOIL, your, your two products multiplied together. And that's going to give you the same answer as that. Um, the way that the, um, the video shows you is, is called the slip and slide method. I've actually never seen it. Um, it's looking at it and kind of reviewing it. Obviously, you get the same answer as well. Um, I just don't think it's e like efficient enough and you're dealing with fractions. And then the other thing too is that I rather you not learn like a, a method, I rather you just factor what you know and can use and be able to do it. So I think that this is the easiest, most straightforward way. And then obviously the textbook uses um, a process called trial and error. And it literally is just seeing which ones work and which ones don't, which is not very time effective or efficient. This gets you the answer right away. And you'll see the more that you do, the more efficient you become with them. 
All right, so let me erase this. Um, clear all drawings, yes. All right, so let's take a look. I'll give you another example here. Um, number number two. Okay, so this one here, you have 5m squared minus 17m plus 6. All right, so I want to take the first two terms, multiply them. Sorry, the first term and the last term, multiply together. So 5 times 6 gives me 30. Step number two, I'm going to list the factors of 30. 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, 4 is not a factor, 5 and 6. 5 and 6 are close to one another, so I know I've listed my factors. Now in this case here, product is positive, so that either means two positive factors or two negatives. So look to the middle term. My middle term is negative 17m, which means all my factors have to be negative. All right, so those that add up to this negative 17 um, are negative 2 and negative 15. So step number three is I'm going to take my original trinomial, 5m squared minus 17m plus 6, and now replace this middle term with the two new factors I got. So it becomes 5m squared minus 2m minus 15m plus 6. So now I got a nice four-term polynomial. I'm going to factor by grouping. So with my first grouping, I can pull out an m. That leaves me with... Um, 5m minus 2. Now notice here with my second grouping, that first term is negative. So with the video that we did yesterday, pull out that negative. So I'm going to pull out a negative 3 for my GCF because I want the two binomials to match. That's going to leave me with positive 5m minus 2. Now they look great. I'm going to pull out that 5m minus 2 and then I'm left over with m minus 3. That becomes final answer. Oh, sorry, that was number two, okay? All right, let's take a look at number three here. Do this one and Kermit the Frog Green. Yes, if it works for me. Oh, my pen is dying on me. All right, I'm gonna charge the pen. All right, number three. Here we have six. 6y <laughs> squared minus 5y minus 4. All right, so we're going to multiply 6 times 4 together. It gives me 24. I don't worry about the negative because I'm going to do my signs here in a second. I'm going to list my factors of 24. 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6, and 5 is not a factor. Now here, product is negative. So if it is negative, that means... One factor has to be positive, one factor has to be negative. So here my middle term is negative 5y, I want to end up with the negatives, which means all your larger factors are negative, while your smaller ones are positive. All right, those that give me negative 5 are positive 3 and negative 8. So step number 3, I'm going to rewrite this trinomial, replacing this negative 5y with my two new factors. So it becomes 6y squared. Uh, plus 3y minus 8y still gives negative 5y, and then keep the original product negative 4. Step number 4, going to do my grouping. So from the first grouping here, I'm going to pull out a 3y. That leaves me with 2y plus 1. Running out of room. From my second one, notice they both have the negative. So I'm going to take that negative. I'm going to take a negative 4. That leaves you with positive 2y plus 1 because you took the negative. Uh, step number five, just finish your grouping. They both got that 2y plus 1, pull that out. You're left with 3y minus 4. Final answer. All right, uh, that was number three. Let's take a look at um, number, do this one in red. Red's my least favorite color. Uh, number four. All right, so this one here, this is number four. I don't know why I keep getting bigger and bigger as I write. So 12y. 12c squared plus 11c minus 5. All right, so I've got 12 times 5 gives me 16. Uh, step number 2 is going to list the factors of 60. 1 and 60, 2 and 30, uh, 3 and 20, 4 and 15, 5 and 12, 6 and 10, and then 7, 8, and 9 are not factors. So I've got all my factors. All right, this one here, product is negative. So just like the last one, one positive, one negative. My middle term is positive 11c. So all 
my largers are going to be positive because I want to end it with a positive, while my smallers are negative. Those that give me 11 would be positive 15 and negative 4. So I'm going to rewrite the trinomial 12c squared plus 11c minus 5. Replace that middle term with your two new factors. So 12c squared minus 4c plus 15c minus 5. All right, do my grouping. So for my first two terms, I'm going to pull out a, um, a 4c. That's going to leave me with 3c minus 1. For my second two groupings, I'm going to pull out a negative. Nope, sorry, I'm going to pull out the positive. The negative is still in the last term. That's what I need it to be on. That leaves me with 3c minus 1. And then finish here, we got the 3c minus 1, and that's going to leave me with 4c Goodness gracious, plus five, final answer. All right, um, the other kind that are in this problem here are um, examples with the uh, GCF. So it just says for like numbers seven, eight, nine, and 10, look for the GCF, then factor the remaining. All right, so let me do one of these with you. Um, she did seven and nine, um, so maybe I'll do 10 with you. Uh, we'll see how this goes, okay? Let's get rid of this red. I don't like the red. Um, let's just do classic black. All right, so here we got, so this is number 10. So you can take a look at her video too, because she'll explain things. It, she just uses that slip and slide, but her answers are the same as what we're going to get as well. All right, so in this one, it's going to be 32W squared minus 16W plus 2. Now, this is always a good habit to get into anyway, is first look for... A GCF. Okay, anytime you can take out something and make it smaller, it's always easier to work with. Plus, you'll be happy to know that um, for oh, what do I got it for you? For Thursday, we're going to be factoring completely, which means that you have to always take out a GCF. So just do it because it's always easier um, when you're working with it anyway. All right. So looking at uh, my trinomial, can't pull out a variable because I have the W squared and the W, but this doesn't have one. But with my numbers, my constants, 32, negative 16, and 2, I can pull out a 2. Now, a lot of you for your quiz, we've got this. When you pull out that 2, you still have to have it there. It can't just, like, disappear because you pulled it out, okay? You still have to have it in front. So if I take out the 30, or sorry, if I take out the 2 from the 32, I'm left with 16w squared minus 8w. Remember, you're pulling it out as a factor, not subtracting it, okay? So you're dividing each one by 2. 16w squared minus 8w plus, and here's another one. Whenever you take out the entire thing, you're always left over with the one, okay? Always, 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 always. All right, so now you're factoring the trinomial, okay? So remember, we did some of the difference of two squares. Um, and this one's going to be the trinomials, okay? First term is larger than one, so I'm going to use the five step. So remember, I want to take 16 times the one, which is nice, 16. List the factors of 16, 1 and 16, 2 and 8, 3 is not a factor, 4 and 4. Product is positive, which means either two positives or two negatives. Middle term is negative 8w, which means everybody's negative. Um, those that give me negative 8 are my bottom two, negative 4, negative 4. So step number three, I'm going to rewrite the trinomial. Uh, 16w squared minus 8w plus 1, but replace the middle term. So 16w squared minus 4w minus 4w, still 8w plus 1, the original product. All right, to factor here by grouping, I'm going to pull out a 4w. That leaves me with 4w minus 1. Now notice here with my second grouping, that first term is negative. So I'm going to pull out a negative 1, and that ends up being my GCF. That's going to leave me with positive 4w. Now notice minus 1 because you're taking out that negative, which switches your sign. So now they both have that 4w minus 1. And then the other term is 4w minus 1. So you can leave it like that. Or remember this is a perfect square um, trinomial. So you can write it as 4w squared minus 1. Now, um, let me show you a little shortcut. Um, you don't have to do this, um, but notice it's the same thing. So remember we did these, um, these are called perfect square 
trinomials. Five-step factoring is five-step factoring. You always get to the same thing. But in section in the textbook 8-5, the two special cases are your difference of two squares and your perfect square trinomials. Nothing wrong with this work. But um, let's just erase some of it. From that first point here, after you pull out your GCF, okay, notice that the first term I see is a perfect square. Eight is a perfect square. And your second one, and sorry, and your last term is a perfect square. So notice 16 is a perfect square, 1 is a perfect square. So if you can take the square root of both of them, or express them as something square um, and something squared, you can check for the middle term, because this could possibly be a perfect square trinomial. This is just another way. You don't have to worry about it for those that would like a little challenge. Go ahead and keep listening to me. For those that don't want to hear it, you can shut this, <laughs> the video off. But in this case here, if I take my two squares, 4w and 1, and then double them either by a positive 2 or by a negative 2, all depending on the middle term. So in this case, middle term is negative. And if it equals your middle term, it ends up being a perfect square trinomial. So without having to do five step, you can actually just go right to the answer right from here. And you can leave it like that. It's just a little, little shortcut. There are other examples too in that section eight five to do that, um, do the same thing. Um, that's if you like it. If not, don't worry about it. It's just a little shortcut. You can always use the five step because it guarantees you're getting the right answer. All right, we'll stop there for today. See you later.